Hey guys, how are you doing? Today we're taking a look at iHealthTube again. I've done quite a few responses to them already, but you know, they make a lot of claims. This guy here is claiming that the nervous system is linked to you getting cancer. Sounds outrageous? Well, let's have a look. One of the other essentials that you talk about is nerve supply. Um, talk about that, how that's connected to, to cancer and, and strengthening that system. Uh, and this will make a lot of sense. Uh, so I had a, a patient came in with lung cancer and I asked him, I said, what do, you, what do you think caused your lung cancer? And he said, I smoked for years. He said, I eat horrible. He said, you know, I, I, I drank for years. Side note for anyone who is interested, and I've talked about this in a very old video before, alcohol and tobacco is a very dangerous combination that significantly increases the risk of certain cancers. Now there are two types of carcinogens that promote cancer development. The first is a mutagenic. These are ones that specifically cause DNA mutation. A simple example is tobacco. They go directly to your lungs and cause damage in DNA. The other type of carcinogen is a promoter, which not many people seem to know exists. These are ones that don't actually mutate your DNA, but rather they do something that increases the likelihood of acquiring mutation. For example, they can damage cells, causing your body to signal cell division in order to heal that tissue. It could be inflammation or an infectious agent. Alcohol is a prime example of this. It damages cells and stimulates proliferation. Now, if you have a mutagenic or a promoter by itself, the chances of acquiring certain types of cancer will increase. However, if you are exposed to both a mutagenic and a promoter, your risk of cancer can increase by magnitudes because they can work together multiplicatively. While one does the mutating, the other makes sure to amplify the mutations by promoting proliferation. This is why being a heavy drinker and a heavy smoker will significantly increase your risk of cancer, and is also why I don't recommend anyone to do either of these. Wow, this seems like a good topic I could cover on my second channel. Fuck, spoilers. Anyway, that was just a small rant, let's continue. Well, all those four, those four may contribute to cancer, but why is it only in your left lung? Think about that. What? First of all, cancer can be present in both lungs, especially when it gets to the later stages when the cells are metastasizing. Have you not seen a patient who had cancer in both lungs? Second of all, it doesn't have to be in both lungs. Carcinogens don't guarantee you cancer, it just increases the risk of it. So when you smoke, for example, both lungs are affected, but since it's only a risk increase, you may only get a tumor in one lung. This just shows that you don't really understand how cancer works. So he was smoking, was he only smoking in his left lung? He only had cancer in his left lung. You know, this is a good time for an ad or something, I don't know. He was eating bad, why, well then why didn't you get cancer in your stomach or somewhere else? Eating bad is so vague, you can't really conclude anything from it unless they said exactly what they eat on a regular basis. And the chances of getting stomach cancer from food isn't really too significant. Unless you're eating nothing but pickles or something, I don't know. Don't quote me on that. So why did it only go to one lung? So, when, when, so you were only bringing oxygen into the right lung and your left lung wasn't getting it? So you have to look at nerve supply. Here we go. Now, I've seen the whole video already, so I know what he's going to say. But basically, he has a hypothesis that cancer is related to nerve supply. And since you only get cancer from one lung and not for the other, which isn't always the case, by the way, it must be due to the difference in nerve quantity. Let's let him speak for himself. So the same thing with the breast. A woman comes in with a hormone-positive breast cancer. She has an increase of estrogen. Well, how come it's only in your left breast? Right? So why is it in your right breast? You have the same hormones running through all of your blood and all of your body, right? The same, I run her test, it doesn't say she has more estrogen in her left breast, she has estrogen everywhere. Basically the same thing as what he said earlier about the lungs, but since he mentioned estrogen, I feel compelled to give yet another fun fact about cancer. Every day we are exposed to a relatively powerful carcinogen, and that is your sex hormones. Both estrogen and testosterone, and some hormones that promote growth. So if you want to significantly decrease your chances of certain types of cancer, chop off your testicles. I highly don't recommend it though. <laughs> because each side of the body, each side has its own nerve supply. So the brain has to send all of its neurological responses for, for my body to run, heal, function, for my heart to beat, for, me, for to fight cancer, my immune system to work, my brain has to recognize everything. Well, yeah, your brain is the control center of the body, but that doesn't mean it's responsible for everything. For example, you mentioned the heart beating. The brain doesn't actually signal the heart to beat. The heart beats by itself using signals generated at the sinoatrial node of the heart. It's basically a continuous cycle where the hyperpolarization of the previous action potential triggers the depolarization of the next. It's a little complicated, so I won't get there. Essentially, the brain 
brain only plays a role in determining how fast the heart beats, not the beating of the heart itself. When you take a heart out of someone's chest, it will continue to beat at about 100 beats per minute, which is the default without hormone interference. Another job you mentioned was healing, and that itself is pretty vague, but a lot of it happens without brain function as well. Things like clotting happens via the intrinsic and extrinsic pathway involving many protein cascades. And lastly, he also mentioned immune response, and that most certainly happens without brain activity as well, unless there's some highly advanced stuff I'm not aware of. But essentially, the immune system is activated by immune cells, usually beginning with the macrophages or dendritic cells, and follows a set path of protein and cell signaling. Most things you mentioned on that list isn't really controlled by the brain, so I don't see how nerve supply is that much of a factor when it comes to diseases like cancer. My brain sends messages down the spinal cord through the nerves into my organs. So my, my, my right breast has a different nerve supply than my left breast. Okay, so I'm just going to put this out there. Nerve supply isn't much of a factor when it comes to risk of cancer. Like I mentioned multiple times before, cancer is just rogue cells, caused by genetic errors at relatively specific spots. So if you want to prevent cancer, you would have to stop mutations and you would have to properly control cell growth. There isn't a way to 100% do that yet, which is why you can't just prevent yourself from getting a tumor. Nerve cells contribute very little when it comes to these factors. Just having a larger nerve supply cannot stop mutations from happening. A larger nerve supply doesn't control cell growth. See, these factors are on the molecular level, which are controlled by molecular mechanisms protein pathways, cell signaling, gene expression. These are what affects cells on an individual level. So if I cut the nerves over here to my left breast, what happens to, you know, sorry, if I cut the nerves over here to my right breast, what happens to the left breast? Nothing. I didn't touch that nerve. So if there's pressure on these nerves, and think about it, an average, a normal woman, she's, she's carrying a baby all day long, she's leaning to this right side, she's holding a baby, she's feeding a baby, you know, she's, she's laying wrong, she's lifting wrong, she finally, everything shifts in her spine and nervous system, the bones shift out of place, put pressure on the nerve. When these nerves have more interference to the right than the left, then the brain can't recognize this as much and we get cancers faster. Let's slow down a bit. So it seems you've made a couple of claims here. You're essentially saying that carrying something like a baby will increase your chances of cancer, which I don't even know how to respond. How can you underestimate the human body that much? Something like sleeping wrong or lifting wrong isn't going to permanently, quote, shift your spine and your bones. At least not unless you somehow fuck yourself up that much. I mean, sure, if something smashes into you really hard or some other very forceful damage, your bones could shift, but something like just carrying a baby isn't going to alter the composition of your nerve cells. Your skin, your adipose tissue, and your bones do a very good job at protecting your internal organs by absorbing trauma. So to those of you who are mothers out there, don't be afraid to just carry your baby. It's not going to increase your chances of getting cancer. That's just ridiculous. In order to truly get to all the causes, we need to look at everything that could possibly do that. That's okay. A lot of things go into your risk of getting cancer, or your general health for that matter. We as humans are exposed to so many substances and do so many things in our lifetime. It's impossible to go back and identify every single little tiny factor that could have played a role in your health. It's just not possible, which is why we focus on the big contributors. Smoking, for example, significantly increases your chances of lung cancer. Obesity increases your chances of diabetes. Avoiding everything that could damage your health is unreasonable, but we can think about exercising eating well and not hitting your head. You know, the big contributors to health. I'm not saying you shouldn't focus on the small factors, just that you don't need to be paranoid about every single thing. That's why I always say and teach, you test you don't guess. The fucking irony. Thanks for sharing that bit of logic because I completely agree with it. And it seems that science agrees with it too. In terms of medicine, things are tested in laboratories and undergo clinical trials before they are accepted by the FDA. Scientists can formulate hypotheses, yes, but they aren't accepted as true until they are tested, replicated, and shown to be true. I am a huge fan of the scientific method because it's a process that's effective in cutting out a lot of the bullshit that people just believe to be fact but isn't. So tell me, was your theory here proven in any way by the scientific method? Has it been shown that carrying and feeding your baby with one side of your body will alter the nerve composition of that side in a negative way? Has it been shown that less nerve cells result in a higher chance of cancer? You know, I've actually come across a paper just now describing how tumor cells can control your sympathetic nervous system. In mice, they implanted xenografts in two different types of mice, one with a crucial nerve receptor missing and one as a control. Tumors in the knockout mice had its growth inhibited. Quite fascinating indeed. Wow, another topic I could talk about on my second channel. 
Fuck, spoilers. I want to know everything and put a plan together. And what would this plan involve? No more holding babies. Those fuckers can walk by themselves. Anyway, that's the end of the video. So along with VidCon, there seem to be quite a few new awesome features coming to YouTube. As someone who has been trying out YouTube full time before I look for employment in the fall, I'm quite excited to be testing out some of these new features that will help creators financially, such as the ease of selling merchandise at the bottom of videos. Since, you know, relying solely on YouTube ad revenue is dangerous. I've gotten a friend to help me with some t-shirt designs that I believe you will enjoy. So if you're interested, feel free to check it out. It'll be in the description and also as an advertisement below this video. Thanks to everyone who supports me on Patreon and is willing to give me money for my work. Who knows, if this works out, I might just stay full time. Anyway, that's all I have to say. See you in the next video.